Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, delete leaves with a given value. We're basically given a binary tree and some integer target and we wanna remove it from that binary tree. The only catch is, well, first of all, there could be multiple nodes with that value. That's number one. Second of all, we only want to delete the nodes with that value that also happen to be leaf nodes. So for example, look at this node over here. It's two, but it's not a leaf node. But look at its left child. It definitely is a leaf node, doesn't have any children, and the value is two, so that's the one we're gonna remove. Now, the thing is, as we remove nodes, for example, if we delete this node, you can clearly see that this node doesn't have a right child and we deleted its left child. So now this is a leaf node. So now we delete this node as well. So that's kind of the hard part about this problem. Some nodes might not start out as leaf nodes, but they can become leaf nodes. And I just want to mention that this is not a binary search tree. Remember that not all binary trees are binary search trees. So we do have to brute force this solution. We can't intelligently search for the twos. So this is a tree problem. And as you know, generally tree problems can be solved with the traversal algorithms, DFS, BFS. I'm going to start with DFS as usual. And if it doesn't work, then we usually go to BFS, but usually it does work. And in the context of this problem, based on what I said earlier, what kind of DFS traversal do you think makes the most sense? Like of the ones that we know, the common ones are like in order, pre order, post order. Which one do you think makes the most sense? To me, pre order definitely doesn't make sense because why would we check? Uh, should we, you know, delete this node over here? Why would we ask that before we've traversed the left and right subtrees? Because it's possible we might delete the entire left and right subtrees. And at that point, we would want to ask, should we delete this node? So pre-order isn't the way, post-order is the way. And that's pretty much the entire problem. So let me just kind of briefly explain the recursive logic of how to solve this problem. We'll code that up. And then after that, we're also going to solve the problem iteratively. It's similar to yesterday's iterative solution, but I will say this one is definitely more challenging. So it's a good test of our abilities. So we'll get to that as well. So with post order traversal, we start at the root. And before we even look at the root, we're going to go to the left subtree and then we're going to go to the right subtree. So let's start with the left. And in this case, the target is three. I kind of deleted that text, but the target is three that we're trying to delete. So then we go to the left child. Again, we don't even look at this guy yet. We go to the left child once again. And here we try to do the same thing, left child, okay. And right child, nope, not that either. Okay, so then we look at the value, finally. It's a leaf node and the value is three. So we wanna delete it, but the question is we're at this node. To delete the node, don't we have to set the parents left child equal to null? So the question is how do we do that recursively? It's kind of weird. Well, the easiest way is this. There's either two cases. Either we delete this node, in which case the parent's left child should be set to null. The other case is we don't delete this node, in which case the left child should stay as whatever it currently is. So the easiest thing to do is just return null if we delete the node and return the node if we don't delete it. And then in the parent, when we call DFS, I'm just I'm gonna quickly write it as DFS, when we call that on root.left, we're gonna assign the result of that recursive function to root.left itself. So maybe it changes, maybe it doesn't change, but this is the easiest way to do this. And this is pretty much the entire problem. We'll do the same thing, of course, with root.write as well. And after we are done with both of those recursive functions, only at that point are we going to then check is the parent, like once we've gone through the left, we deleted it, we didn't delete the right child, so it stayed the same. Then we're gonna look at the parent and say, okay, does it have a left child? No. Does it have a right child? Yes. So therefore we can't delete this node even though the value is three. So that's pretty much for the left subtree, for the right subtree, it's gonna be similar. It's three, no children, so delete this node. And then we return up to the parent. We deleted this guy, but it still does have a left child. So we keep this here, but it's a one anyway. So even if it didn't have any children, we would still keep this anyway. Just to briefly go over this example here, we're going to, you know, just keep going down recursively. We're going to get to two. Okay, we have to delete it. Therefore, we're going to return null to the parent. Then the parent will not have a left child. It never had a right child to begin with. Therefore, we're going to delete this as well by returning null to the parent. And then, you know, you can kind of just imagine that we're just going to keep repeating that until we get to the root. And the only reason we don't delete the root, it doesn't have a left child. It doesn't have a right child. The only reason we don't delete 
read it is because it's a one. That would be the ultimate result. Okay, let's code this up. The overall time and space complexity is gonna be big O of N because that's just how a tree traversal works. We visit every single node, and in the worst case, the tree itself could be like this node down here where it's pretty much a linked list. This tree is pretty much a linked list, so the height of the tree is N. Therefore, the space complexity is gonna be big O of N because that is gonna be the recursive call stack size. Okay, so to solve this recursively, let's check, first of all, the base case, typically with recursive functions is uh, with trees, is the root null. If it is, we should return. But remember, the return value in this problem does matter. I think by default, this is kind of just going to be null anyway, but just to be explicit, let's explicitly return null. Next, remember, this is post-order traversal. So we want to do left subtree, right subtree, and then look at the root. So let's set root.left equal to remove leafs from the left subtree. And remember, there actually is a second parameter in this problem. Don't forget about that. So let's pass in the target as well. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the right subtree, just a quick copy and paste job there. And now for the interesting part, what should we do? Well, there's two cases. Either this is a leaf node, so not root dot left and not root dot right. And not only that, but the value also has to be equal to the target. We're not deleting every leaf node, only leaf nodes with the target. So now recall, how do we delete again? Well, we just return null. How do we not delete? Like if this doesn't evaluate to true, then what should we do? Probably just return the original node. This is pretty much the entire solution, at least doing it recursively. And as you can see on the left, yes, it works. It's pretty efficient. Okay, so now let's do the iterative post-order solution. We generally use a stack for that for reasons I kind of explained in yesterday's video to mimic like the recursive call stack. And we start with the root node on the stack. Remember that when we pop this one, we're at this node but we don't want to visit this node just yet we want to go through the entire left subtree and the entire right subtree and then look at this node and the value of that node so how do we kind of mimic that functionality with an iterative stack well same as yesterday's answer when we pop a node like this one we want to know if this has been visited or not the first time we pop it it hasn't yet been visited then we will mark it visited and i'm going to use a hash set to do that because the context of this problem is slightly different than yesterday so a hash set should be sufficient so now we're going to say that one has been visited. It's true. And obviously there's duplicates in this tree. So I don't really know a good way to uh, differentiate that down here, but basically one has been visited now at the same time. It wasn't originally visited. We would have looked it up. It wasn't originally there. So before we add it to visit, we would say, let's add one back to the stack and let's add its children to the stack. The order that we add the children in doesn't really matter, but we do have to make sure we add the parent first because stacks are going to be popped last in first out. So now we pop this guy. Let's assume it's this one over here. And pretty much the same thing. We're going to look. It hasn't yet been visited. Let's go ahead and add it back to the stack and add its children to the stack three, two. And let's mark three as visited. I guess the best way to mark them visited is just going to be to draw it like this, to be honest. And now suppose we pop two. Two is a special case. It's a leaf node. So in our code, we can detect that pretty easily just by checking that it doesn't have any children. So even though it hasn't been visited, who cares? It's a leaf node. Let's go ahead and just process it anyway. Let's look at the value. It's a two, but we're looking for threes. So we don't delete this. We leave it as is. Since we've right now just been going over how to do post order, there is another component to make this work. We have to, like when we're actually deleting a node, as you're going to see here, now we're going to pop this guy. We're popping three this is also a leaf node and it has the target value so we want to delete it but how do we delete this guy well we would ideally want to set the left pointer of the parent to null so how the heck do we do that the easiest thing and I didn't really show it as we were going we're gonna have a third data structure it's gonna be a hash map I'm gonna call it uh, I guess parents basically gonna be a parent map it's gonna map every single node to its parent that's very easy to build isn't it like as we start at the root and as we traverse the tree we can just add the parents like when we are at one and we add three and this guy to the stack at the same time that we do that we can say that the parent of this 
is one. The parent of this is this node. Let's just assume we have a mapping for that by the time we get down here. So if we assume we do have that mapping, then very easily we can just say for the left parent here, set it to null. And we'll know that this is a left child and it's not a right child because we can pretty much just do an if statement for that. We can check, okay, the parent, is this either the left child or is this the right child? That'll be easy enough to do. And so this will be pretty much deleted from the tree in that case. And that's more or less the main idea of this problem. The only thing is, what about the root node? What if we had a tree that looked like this, but the root was also to delete this, delete this, delete this, and delete the root node. But how do we delete the root node with the way I explained this? It doesn't even have a parent. Well, we can add an if statement in that particular case to detect that to check the root doesn't have a parent in this hash map we'd probably set the roots parent equal to null and in that case we would probably just return null so as you can kind of tell this solution is going to have quite a few if statements but the overall time complexity and memory complexity is going to be unchanged the stack is going to be responsible for the memory obviously well i guess all the uh, other data structures as well Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and declare our stack and initialize it with the root. I'm also going to have those other data structures, the hash set to mark nodes visited, and a parents map, which I'm actually going to initialize like this. Root is mapped to null for reasons I kind of talked about a second ago, since the root obviously doesn't have a parent. Then we're going to have a loop. While the stack is non-empty, let's pop a node from the stack. And first things first, let's just check if it's a leaf node. If not, node.left and not node.right. We'll have an else statement over here for if it's not a leaf node. So if it is a leaf node, then we want to check another thing. Is this the target that we're looking for? If it is, let's go ahead and delete it. How are we going to delete it? Well, let's get the parent. We'll assume we just have a pointer to that in this map. And then we want to check first check if this is the root node. So if not P, that means it doesn't have a parent. So it must be the root node, in which case we're just going to return null. Other case is it's non null. And then we just have to figure out if this is a left child or a right child. So we're going to check the parent is the parents left pointer equal to the current node, or maybe the parents right pointer is equal to the current node. So in the first case, we'll do P dot left is equal to null. In the other case, we'll do the opposite P dot right is equal to null. So this is how we are deleting the node. We're pretty much done with that. This is pretty much the base case of what we showed in the recursive solution. And this is going to be the opposite. This is going to be the recursive step. One thing is that if this is not a leaf node, we want to mark it as visited, right? And I guess we could have done that up here as well, but there's really no need to mark like a leaf node as visited because we're probably not going to visit it twice anyway. But the reason I'm not putting this line of code up here is because we actually need it for this. Like in this step is when we're going to say stack dot append the current node. And we're going to say if the left node exists, append that as well. And we're going to say, obviously, if the right node exists, go ahead and append that as well. So obviously, we'd only want to do this part a single time. How do we prevent ourselves from doing it a second time? Well, obviously, we need some kind of guardrail. That's what visit hash set is for in the first place. So one thing I'm going to add to this condition is else if node is not in visit. Only in that case are we going to mark it visited and do this portion. Now, the only thing I haven't done, I think, is actually uh, update the parents themselves. Can you kind of guess where that code would go? Probably uh, this part where we're going from parent to child. So if we're adding this to the stack before or after, I guess we could say parents node.left is going to be equal to node. That's the parent of this node. Down here, it has the same parent. The right node also has the same parent. And this is pretty much the entire code. It's quite a lot mostly just because of all the conditionals, to be honest. The other case is we might not necessarily be deleting the root node. So if we don't do that, let's out here return the root node where maybe some of the children in that tree have been deleted. So let's go ahead and run this. Looks like I was going too fast and forgot my double equals for these conditions. Sorry about that. 
Okay, now you can see that it does work. It's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.